Welcome back to Still Please Galaxy of Heroes. This is Grand Arena, the first match of season 51. And recording that opening already took seven attempts, so this is probably going to be a pretty sloppy day. We begin the season in Kyber 2, pretty close to Kyber 1. I don't, even if we win out, I think we might be a little short. We're not going to do a recap because my opponents last week didn't even bother attacking. We went 3-0 and by default, which is a little disappointing and a little worrisome about the health of the game because there's a lot... A lot of data points suggesting to me that a lot of players are checking out. And usually while we're this close to Kyber 1, like we're within 100 skill points of Kyber 1, this is when I usually get pummeled, I go 0-3, and, and I get knocked back down to the middle of Kyber 2. This bracket though is relatively favorable. So my opponent here is Safari Bro, but there's only four. Half the bracket is at eight GLs. We've got a guy at six, two at seven. Oh, and I am now a six GL account. So the five GL era is officially over. I have six GLs, although the newest one, Lord Vader, is not up to speed. We'll th still like goof around with him. Or maybe did I set him on defense? I don't even know. Uh, but with the rest of this here, my opponent Safari Bro. Good Zeta's 261. Ami is a little light at eight. 18, but that's not problematic. But I'm number one in Ami's at 30. There's another guy at 29. He's the other 6GL player. Then there's 22, 25. With the relics, my opponent is really good at 231. That's a lot of relics. That's a tough opponent. And then the rest of the bracket... It's more of that 190-ish range, plus or minus 10-ish. And then depth in general is looking pretty strong on most players. Relic distribution, my opponent's looking pretty good. He's got 60 tier 7s. He's got 31 tier 8s, 14 tier 9s. This is definitely the strongest relic roster in the bracket. He is looks to be the strongest account in the bracket. With the mods... I'm a little bit better. I'm, where am I? One, two, three. I'm tied for fourth for the top 25 mods with a top 500. I am number two. There's one guy beating me at 18.81 average. I am the second best with the depth of top 500 mods. With the specific counts, I've got 10 more 25 plus on my opponents. I've got 70-ish 20 plus, and I've got, ooh, I got like 100. 40 of the 15 plus and when we look at the rest of the bracket there's some there's a number of people beating me with a 25 plus number of players in like the 40 count range but i'm close to that when it comes to the 20 plus counts though only one player is beating me there the guy who's beating me overall in the speed averages and 15 plus depth too there's a two players ahead of me with overall counts so this is unlike other brackets of this range where i've been lower half lower half of mods i am i'm keeping in pace with some of the best modern accounts of this bracket. Datacrons, there are four of us with double digit level nine crons. Now I can't use all of those, but it is helpful as a seriousness metric. With the GLs, my opponent's got level nine on all of his GL units. One player in the bracket without Leia, everybody with Jabba, two players without Lord Vader, but mine is only at gear 11, and only two of the Zetas. I could have dropped them all. For whatever reason, I was thinking, oh, Oh, I'll try and go light on these Zetas for the event and it's it's worthless. There's not a useful exercise. He will be further developed by next week. Two of us without Ray, and I'm the only player without SLKR. With the Amis, it's a pretty good looking Melgus. Two Amis, Radis has one, Aiden, Starkiller only one. My Starkiller now has two. That's a relatively recent Omicron. I also brought my Starkiller up to Relic 8. Very little of the bracket has dash on me, and that's good because... I don't think you should be placing that one. Wampa, my opponent's Wampa is slow, but looks good other than that. Uh, Savage, Treya, Afra. Three players in the bracket don't have Afra. And my opponent's Afra looks solid. <clears throat> one player without Swolo. We've, most players have a pretty solid Zori. Two players in the bracket without Third Sister. Two players without Malakos. Two players in the bracket with Mando Bow. So if I get matched up with one of those opponents, it is going 
going to be the first time. And then Bane here. I have unlocked now. I brought him up to gear 11 for testing purposes for, for the week. Just so that we can check. Oh, you know what? Before I forget, this opponent here, Chakanuru. He is a follower of the channel. Reached out in the chat. Sent me a little message. So we are going to be hoping to get matched up with him. Because that'll be a fun experience if that can happen. So I got to make sure I do my work. Because he's got a pretty good looking account. He's at 7 GLs. His modding is good. His counts are good. He's taken Datacron seriously. The only GL he doesn't have is Lord Vader. That makes sense. And then he doesn't have Aphra. Doesn't have Third Sister. Doesn't have Mando Bow. But everything else is kind of in line. Except for he doesn't have a fast Echo. That's actually something I would tell him to invest in. Because that Echo right there. You throw a Zeta on that. And that is a very usable Bad Bad Squad. Follow them off Gideon. Okay. One player in the bracket does not have Cal Kestis. Everyone else does. One other guy probably just unlocked his cow and doesn't have him at Relics. Cal's a really expensive character to gear up, so that's not really surprising. If you just got Cal, it might be a little bit, unless you prepared in advance. Now with the ships, everyone's Leviathan. Only one player with a six star. Everybody with a seven star. Profundity looks good. Let's move on. With Savari Pro, looking at the specifics here. We organized by speed. We're looking for Maul and Starkiller. Ooh. So, yeah, somewhere in this range. So, we're looking at 15, 16, 17 minimum. And he has 20 characters. Bosk is at 305. Han is at 299. Starkiller is at 293. So, you can see he's got his Rex. He's got Maul and Grand Inquisitor looking good. Mara Jade, Cat, Moff Gideon, Piet, Echo. Some key characters. But then, like, Rex, BT1, Third Sister, CLS, all a little bit slower not problematically slower but some of these characters like we're, we might see some differences especially because with his defense one of the things that i looked in my scouting earlier today he doesn't have any data crumbs and I made sure to put all my data crowns down. So this is what we got going on for this match. We got Matuskins. We have Rex, Crex Squad. We got Boss, Radis with a Jin Cron. It's not that good of a cron. Like, I'll show you what it, it does. It's like no one's been talking about this cron. But, you know, it was an easy thing to obtain. And it slightly boosts the quality of a squad. Maybe to a degree that it messes up a counter. That's all I'm hoping for. Then in the lower territory, we are looking at Leia. We got Maul here. I threw down a Mandalorian Kron. We've got Dash, Melgus. I do throw on a Sith Kron. I had to choose between, between do I put a Doubt Kron or the Sith Assassin Kron. I decided to go with Sith, the Sith Assassin. Is that that good though? The Doubt Kron, probably better. But we're giving it a shot. We got a Rebel Fighter Kron and then CLS. And then the back territory. We're looking at Grand Inquisitor, Finzori, Dash, Chief, and Third Sister. And then with Fleet, because for whatever reason, my fleet defenses are different between 5v5 and 3v3, we get to play things a little bit differently. And you know what, now that I think about it, that might, even though it kind of annoys me sometimes playing it that, that way, not being able to play it certain ways, because I kind of prefer what I have on offense with this setup, but it does keep me a little bit better practiced at certain counters, because sometimes, like, like, I was in Territory Wars the other day playing some of these matches it's just clear that i forgot how to play some of these counters because you get out of practice now we got melgus ray swallow sith eternal with savage like he hasn't looked at this in a while this may even be a default one we got we got lord vader and down below more gls with leia jabba paired with krex seer and third sister so we don't have the Bosch crown anymore, so we need to find ways to manage Leia. But we're still going to do JMK. Well, do we want to do JMK with this? It's probably my best option. Yeah, let's just do JMK with this. You probably noticed that the audio levels were off a little bit. I didn't notice until after the record, so we are re-recording all the audio from these matches because the sound effects were drowning out my patter. But that does mean we get to watch this at least on a little bit of an accelerated speed. We played at 1.5 speed. And we'll just try and recreate the magic, figure out what we said. Now, JMK, Jabba, this is still my preferred counter for this, even though we have some other options. I don't know if Dark Trooper Moff Gideon is going to work in a 3v3 context. I didn't want to risk that. Don't have a great pool of Jedi Krons right now. I do think... 
Well, I, I'm definitely going to get a few. I'm just trying to think through what I want for JMK. Because that Jedi Revive isn't going to work with Cat. Although, maybe we could work it out where if JMK gets the final takedown. But the JMK counter is strong enough that it's really not that important. As long as the Hut Cartel don't have a, a Kron, this is a strong counter. So we very quickly took out Kurzantin to start. That way we could target who we want, also get rid of the taunt temporarily, giving me an opportunity to charge up the alt, which I don't believe I did correctly in this playthrough. I think I brought in Ahsoka for uh, the assist too early and didn't get to uh, charge up the alt correctly. But that's just because it's the first match of a 3v3 and I'm a little rusty. Really just first week, first couple games back from any Grand Arena. Get a little ru rusty from that week off. And so we aren't able to attack Jabba for as long as I want because our cooldown on the alt was short too. But we'll get through Kersantin soon enough. We, we just... Right now we're working on charging up the alt. So we can focus down on Jabba without distractions. Now that it's tripped, we can do it. Kersantin's not somebody I care about. He's easy to deal with after the fact. Land that healing immunity. And we're done. And we can auto from here. There is some nonsense I was talking about in the original playthrough. I th we will get to it, but these no we got Crex, we got Seer, we have Third Sister. With Third Sister, we're just going to do Trail. In 3v3, this is a strong counter, even with gear 12, and that's what I've got. But we will bring in Savage, because at gear 12, Scion doesn't really cut it, and Savage makes this easy. And because that Savage crown, I have a... I have good relics on my Savage, which was, um, that Kron was fine, it wasn't anything special. But we very quickly take out Third Sister, and now we can do whatever. Because the Treya army uh, tripped the Nihilus cooldowns, because Nihilus fell below 100 health. But easy. For the most part, this match went fine, except I'm going to make a really bad call uh, pretty soon. It was a foolish decision, and it's going to have some big impacts. But I am taking too long to deliberate. Hopefully I remember to cut this out. Now we're looking at the top territory. We're looking for any GLs. We're going to go hit Ray, and we're always going to use Star Killer unless something really requires me not to. And we're about, we're about like a month in with having two Amis on Star Killer, and I just brought Star Killer up to Relic Eight fairly recently. And here we dispel the crit hit immunity. As I recall, I don't play this completely right. I don't play it bad, and we don't lose it, but I make one or two decisions that were not correct. I think it's just... I was playing this game late at night. So we very quickly, I think, trip all of the damage immunities. Although maybe that match happened today. When, I played round two today. This is when I'm re-recording this audio. Maybe it was today's match that I, I made the error. So we go land some stuns. No, I think it's this match. No, no, it's not this match. It was today's match. Yeah, no, this I play fine. We just got to wait for this crit hit immunity to come off, and we're just wasting time. Yeah. No, I played that fine. I'm thinking of today's match. I didn't, I wasn't watching. I was just kind of mindlessly playing and I made a choice, which just, it extended the time it took me to get through it. It didn't, like it didn't affect banners or anything. Now here's where I make the error. Now I, mean, I know armor doesn't work. I know watt doesn't work. 
But because you don't actually face Sith Eternal Emperor all that often, I wasn't certain if Savage didn't work, if Savage was on the team. And I just decided I was going to do it anyway because I felt like I was going to get through it regardless. So I just decided whatever, we'll use Wampa now. And if it loses, it loses, but at least I learn for the future if I need to be considering Savage as an avoid character. And this is going to be a dumb waste of a decision that we will get to later. Because, I mean, you can tell from the narration that this does not work, that it definitely Savage is a no-go. So we burn the counter in some needless testing and now we're going to take out the other teams Melgus here this is easy stuff I'm, I'm think I'm gonna get him a Jedi Kron that prevents the revives for Cal I already have the Cal Kron I got it after lock-in but I think the level 6 ability I'm going to reroll. This is actually the crown that turns into the Kel crown. That's the level 6 ability that's on it right now. And I like it. It's a good ability. It's not really going to change things because without the crown, this is a counter. I just want that level 6 anti-revive ability because it just eliminates the nuisance of this like i'm not going to have any issues here everything's going to work out well like we're calling the assist to get the ability block on melgus from basla that works fine now we're waiting for the stealth to come off of talon and it does and this goes about as well as it's going to we take out talon now we don't need to worry about that revive that she does on leader although we always tend to lose barris and i'm not going to use barris anymore with this just the thinking being like Barris should make them more survivable, but it just... I think I've lost Barris every time I've made her the third. So that goes fine. It always goes fine. I just think that maybe we do the anti-revive and just not even have to worry at all about Talon. Now, we don't have the Afrocron anymore. But she's still great. And does very well up against Lord Vader. And even if she isn't going to win, she is going to set any Lord Vader up for an easy cleanup. And I'd rather bring Fennec in as a cleanup than as a starter. Especially as we get play up against opponents with good mods and high relics. I just don't want to mess around. And if... If Afra ever gets a squad member that can manage debuffs, she's going to be so good. It's just a cleanse would change everything. I think that's very much why she doesn't have one. Because really the fact that this squad can't cleanse is its biggest problem. Yeah, let's see here. We're now on a four on one. But those dots are getting high. We're doing some damage, and it is a Relic 9 Vader. I'm going to go for this because it gives a little turn meter, gives a little protection recovery, but we don't really get anything. Everybody dies. I bring him back, and we die off. And we can't do anything from here. But now we have an easy cleanup. And for me, up against the Lord Vader, I mean, if we had Bane, things would be different. Well, I mean, we have Bane, but I didn't... Just for kind of unnecessary reasons, I left him at gear 11 because I wanted to do a week of testing at gear 11. And we'll do it in this match. But I think the benefit of that decision is marginal. All right, so we do Fennec. 
We don't need Mando, so we bring in Zam for the Ami and the extra stats, make everybody a little bit more survivable, buy myself a little bit of time. Also, we get the speeds so to speed everything up. I did cleanse too early, and that's probably why we lost Zam. It's not going to affect things, but maybe I kind of got away with one. I should have just waited until more debuffs were around, but it's these are first week back from a month off of 3v3 mistakes. Just being a little rusty. So we've taken down most of the GLs. Now we got a Crux here. We're going to do Crux because I just have one go-to counter. Although there's other options now, especially with the new Krons. I believe Sidious can beat it. Is that right? Because th No, there is the tenacity up. I feel like I heard somebody say Crux can do it. But this is what I like to do. I like to do Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon plus Kellerin is fantastic against this. So we can land an armor shred, get a bunch of assists, bunch of recovery, like we already have all of our protection back. I am working on getting the Keller and Kron. I am almost to seven stars. And we've done enough low investment testing that once he hits seven stars, we're going right to relics. He's a three star throw on your squad right away character. Like if you're not using Keller and yet, Use Kellerin. So that right there is the first sacrifice from Qui-Gon. Which is not great, but it's not terrible. It just means that we can, we can lose him now. I usually don't lose him. But this is what's nice, like Rex keeps going with his aerial advantage over for for Cam. But now we have lost Qui-Gon. But we get our stat boost, we quickly take down fives. We like that's a six star gear eleven Kellerin just took a shot from from Rex after he's already had the time to charge up two aerial aerial advantages. So we know his stats were pretty high at that point. So for a non-relic Kellerin to take that aerial advantage, awesome. Love Kellerin. Alright. Rex will be down soon. We're at no risk at losing at this stage. But Rex does have a lot of recovery that he does take a little bit of work to get through. But this, this is a nice defensive team, but if you know your way through it, you, you can get through it. And I usually don't lose Qui-Gon. I think that's more a testament to the quality of my opponent's modding and his relic levels. Because really that's what was strong. His modding was a little not as strong as his relics. Because even though I think my I think my mods were better. But they weren't crazy better if they were and I think it was beating me in certain metrics and all this stuff's bleeding together I don't even remember what I said now Leia here we're doing Jabba because Le Leia without Krons I still am throwing her on defense but it's not it's not the go to that it was Although I do think the Rebel Fighter Krons do make her st still make it where she's annoying on defense. Because you can get a Drogon who can just one shot. Or not, I'm not even talking with like the, the, the designed one shot. But later in the match when he gets the stacking offense from the level 6 ability on the Kron, he can he can take out somebody... Unrelated from the first basic of the battle. Yeah, so 
we're doing these. We're gonna take out Drogon soon. Doing a lot of damage on Bosch. I'm getting a little worried about that. I'm going for the protection up because I don't want to lose Bosch. And there it happens, we lose Bosch. And this is a Drogon without the crown. But we do know we have the Rancor coming in a moment. We got the payout just then. I wanted the protection up because I know I'm just, I'm going to start taking hits. So I wanted that protection up. I think it was the right choice considering all the hits that Jabba just took. And now we've got ambushed, which is not ideal. And that is a disaster. I forgot that happened. I legitimately thought Rancor, we were going to eat somebody with Rancor. And I don't even remember how I got through this. What did I do? Oh, this is what I did. Yeah, so I have a gear 11 Bane. And right now we have a preloaded turn meter. And um, obviously this works with a Relic Bane. But at this point, I was pretty concerned. I think we look at something, but I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Yeah, I wanted to consider this for the Dark Trooper Moff Gideon for a moment, and then I changed my mind. Now we're doing Gear 11 Bane up against Leia. And my using of him is limited. But I did want to showcase what we can do with the Gear 11 Bane, because not all players can just immediately take somebody up to Relics. And it's what I like to do on this channel, is do some of this low gear play. Like, you can go to any other place and see high gear play. But I like to show the low gear stuff in here. No Amis. Well, no, I do have Amis. I think I put two Amis on, on Bane. So we very quickly get to the alt. Because really, that's all we need from Bane. Bane dies off, and we can eliminate Drogon. We're going to quickly link up again. I'm going to take out R2, because my expectation is we're going to lose. So I should make sure that if I'm going to lose, that we can have an easier cleanup. Which, for Gear 11 Bane, that is fantastic. Because it saves... It keeps this match alive. Now I need to make some decisions about how I'm going to get through some of this other stuff. So we are going to do Sidious up against this. There is no Malikos, so it is easier. And at the... At the time, I had no idea how this was going to function, but the reasoning I went this way is in Squad Arena, I've been testing this crown. I used it up against a JML in Squad Arena. It lost, but it took out like two guys. I was really impressed. And so here we are. I wanted to give it a good challenge. Sir Juna felt like a workable challenge. And we go in. I don't know if I would have done it with Malikos present, although I have since heard it works out fairly well. But right now we're just cleansing those buffs. Difficult, 
But we have a good amount of recovery. We took a big hit from Sir Junda. And all we got to do is get to the f right there. The, that was the five stacks of dots taken out crew. That's all we need to accomplish is getting five dots. So I think change of modding is going to help. There's also a different level three and level six ability that I could use for it, but I haven't re-rolled those yet. But that was a valuable counter. Now we're going to do Dark Troop Moff Gideon clean this up. And I don't think this, I think this goes poorly, if I remember right. In 5v5, I've used this as a cleanup. And also, I shouldn't have used Dark Trooper. I was just not really thinking. Because the Kron would mean I would have a Dark Trooper, regardless. But I kind of just forgot about that condition on the Kron. I should have brought in Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon or Death Trooper or somebody else. But we're not really making much progress. She's got a good amount of recovery. No, definitely not Moff Gideon because Moff Gideon with the turn meter manipulation. I believe Leia has something in her kit that reacts to turn meter manipulation which is why the drogan functions the way that he functions but yeah you see the summon from dark trooper is why i didn't need to have dark trooper on the squad and we would have been better off without him but this isn't going to work we will take those hits And we'll have to find something else to clean this up with. And with that Relic 9 Leia, I can't do something like Gas. Because that's a little risky. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do up against Sith Eternal Emperor. Because now I've lost counters. Counters that I could and should be using. And now I'm pretty worried. At this at this stage, we've lost too much. Now, we basically have to resort to JML because nothing else is going to work. I don't have any more Jedi Krons. Still need to work on gathering a bunch of those. Yeah, so we get to work here. Because we're... We are lacking better options. So do a few hits. Leo will be down in a moment. Let's talk some nonsense. So some of the things I was talking about during the original record of this is... Anticipating Fallout, I'm just on this big kick of post-apocalyptic shows. Generally a genre that I love and I'm pumped. And so one of the things I've watched is, one I've talked about in some of the more recent videos, I've been catching up on Walking Dead stuff that I skipped most of the, the other related shows. The Daryl show uh, I thought was supposed to be good. I really liked the first two episodes, especially the second episode had one of the best, like, beginning of the pandemic moments that I've seen depicted. Really, there's not too many media that does that too well, like the Dawn of the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead does it well, but episode two, Daryl Dixon does it real well. Um, but the rest of the show just falls on its face. It's very disappointing. There's no Ami on this Raider, so this is this is going to crush. I, I use this counter just because I kind of just want to show 
why I like it up as if the raid around me was there, but it wasn't. So it's just kind of rips it apart. And then this is easy. Tells the Night Sisters this is another strong one. We're not even going to talk about this one. We're going to get caught up on my Daryl Dixon point. So the Daryl Dixon one, it's it's like kind of ridiculous. I, I wonder what French people think of it. Because it is in the most like cartoonish depiction of what an American thinks of French people. It hits all the notes. Like it hits Edith Piaf. It hits that like Moulin Rouge, like circus atmosphere. It hits the food, the drinking, the farm, like stereotypical farm people, the nuns, like every like beat of American pop culture depiction of French people is all sucked into this one show and regurgitated out. And it's, it's, it, it's, it's offensive in that way where you have these culturally insensitive depictions are but it kind of gets glossed over because it's like French people or Irish people or whatever it is. it's like those versions get ignored get they just kind of get uh, overlooked it's a little ridiculous um, and the show's not very good and it's boring and very tropey and it kind of just falls apart into this very formulaic uh, formulaic like lone wolf and cub show that has no larger idea of what it wants to be telling and it's kind of boring it's a little disappointed because i heard that that was one of the better ones and actually afterwards when i looked at the reviews the dead city one has some of the good reviews so that one's coming up next but i took a break from the walking dead after that although the anthology one i talked about the, the anthology one before the anth anthology one's good Inconsistent, but good. I weren't even going to This, the only thing is, you need to make sure Anakin burns his AoE before you take out Qui-Gon. And now he burned it, now he can take out Qui-Gon. Otherwise, Anakin's going to kill you. I'm saving the marked for when we can go after Anakin. Like that. Yeah, so the next thing we tried is I started Apple+. Plus. And I watched Silo. And Silo is awesome. It's so good. I watched, I just cranked it out over two days. It's, I think it's 10 episodes. I did like five episodes a day. It was so good. Uh, you can basically think of it as just like a Fallout vault. Where these people, they live in a silo. They don't know how they got there. It's a, like a missile silo. They don't know how they got there. They don't know how long they've been there. They don't know what happened to the world. They don't really understand the world before. All they know is that it exists, and they know that they can't go outside. So they just live in this place. They have elected officials. People are in charge. And then you get this mystery show that kind of starts to unravel. Why are they there? What is going on? Who's in control? Uh, the different like, class dichotomies of people living on different levels of the silo. It's fantastic. I want to read the book now. The whole book series. Uh, really, really well done. Great actors, great cast, and great set design. It's pretty fantastic. The only problem with it is Common is the the rapper Common uh, is not good at acting. And it's kind of, it's kind of jarring, especially when he's up against high quality actors. It kind of takes you out of it from time to time. Yeah, so here we are doing Trench up against, up against Sith Eternal Emperor. And this is what I should have done to start because we can take out the side characters, no problem. We got to revive. We, well, the rev now that he's hit the alt, now Sith C's hit the alt, the revive doesn't matter. Uh, but with all these assists, with the control, we're in a position where we can do a little bit of work up against Savage. We're not going to be able to take out Savage now, but that was a strong start. And 
And now I gotta figure out something up against Savage, but we do have gas still. We have a number of, we have a couple options, but you can see why using Wampa first was a massive mistake. Because we're running low now on options. So, is this what, this isn't what I did. No, I'm going to change my mind. I'm pretty sure I changed my mind. Is this what I did? Oh, I know what happened. No, I remember what happened. So what happens is I'm going to go down to my knees and I'm going to realize I shouldn't have used gas. Because without Rex and Fives, this does not run the same up against Darth Revan. Like, it's really disappointing. So, I should have used Gasp maybe to take out S Savage. Alright, we're not going to talk about this Malik one. So, then after watching Silo, I started watching Station Eleven. I, at the, I'm at i done with it now, but I talk about it in today's video. At the time of this recording, I wasn't done with it, though. I just started it. And I really like Station Eleven. Very different show than Silo, though. Silo is, like, sci-fi. Station Eleven is not so much sci-fi. It is just a really good drama. It's a pandemic show it's people living and existing in a post-apocalyptic context and it has a sci-fi setting because of that but the story itself is not really science fiction it's just it's relationships it's it's social commentary it is it is the drama of the characters and that's really what it's about and focused on is it doesn't have a larger point of well it does have a larger point but not in the way it doesn't have like the societal commentary of a lot of like hard sci-fi does and then we had a little crash moment it didn't affect anything which is good it has Taking a match for me from time to time. Alright, so we're doing Bad Bats to take out Radis. Which is a counter that, for me, has been inconsistent. I've only recently taken them up to Relic, so I think there might be fine-tuning on my end. Might be mods on my end. But... It is a good counter that most people do fine with. I think it might be more, maybe maybe I'm just, I'm approaching it wrong. Maybe I should be playing it differently. I need to watch somebody's video on it is probably what I need to do. But it goes fine for me this time. And maybe in 3v3 it's a little bit easier. But in 5v5, my results with this counter have been inconsistent. Although, I would like to get it to a consistent level, because otherwise, Bad Batch these days, I'm not using too much. Like, one of the things that I do, and maybe I, maybe I shouldn't do, is I usually call for tech, because I like the target lock mechanic... I value that more than what Hunter does and maybe like like right now I decide I'm just gonna play it like I normally play bad bats like I'm checking the turn order to see what's gonna happen so I go with the buffs and that probably was the wrong call maybe I should have thrown the thrown the the daggers but it works fine we get we get by it but that could have been disastrous. We were lucky that it wasn't. Now here, we're going to do my JTR thing, because we don't really have a lot of other options. This isn't something I've tested before. I mean, the, the squad is, but usually we use it up against Maul. We use it up against Bounty Hunters. 
I haven't tried it up against Darth Revan. And now I go for it. We don't take out Revan, but we go under stealth, we impact the cooldowns. We're going to just take out Fallen because she's close. And now we got to make a decision here of who we want to eliminate. I think we're going to start with Revan. And I mean, and by that I mean with Swallow's turns. But I think I may have changed my mind at some point. But you can see they keep going after after Ray, which is great, because Ray can't die right now. Go under stealth, focus the attacks over there. Now we don't have to worry about any AoEs, which is going to really protect my R2. Go back under stealth. Wish we had a little bit more recovery, but it's not a big deal. Start landing armor shreds, and then again, back under stealth. Single targeted attacks. The healing immunity, now multiple armor shreds, and we just keep doing the same thing. Keep everyone under stealth so that the targets go on to Ray, who is unkillable with Swallow there. And that is fantastic. I might even try that again if I come if I come across a Darth Revan. Not too common, but it's, it happens. Now we're gonna have to be wrapping up soon because we are out of counters. And you can see, that now we are in a situation where we need to take down a Savage. I opt to not use stop. We do a few hits, get a big hit in, a little recovery, feed some turn meter, do a hit, but nothing's really, we're not really doing anything. But we do get through Savage. And now we are in that 1v1 situation. Like, he's going to take us out. But you can see in this situation now, if I would have saved Wampa, we'd have an easy cleanup. But I didn't. And my opponent showed up to beat me. We did get a number of holds though. Tuscan's here picking up a hold. Raider Kron in action. I th think we could have won had we been able to get through that in like two, three attempts. Now Dash here gets a hold and he takes three attempts to get through Leia. And all it would have taken me was to not use Wampa first. And then we get a hold here, surprise hold with Nisa and the Ewoks. It would have been close though. I, it's not a guarantee that we would have win, we would have won, but I think we would have been in this range. We got enough holds that it was in play, but we didn't play it right. So congrats to Safari Bro. Well played, you executed and I did not. Which is also unfortunate because it likely means that I'm not going to get that matchup against against uh, Chakanuru. But we are looking to have a good match, good season regardless, with all the new weapons that we have with Lord Vader, Bane. And we're going to have a bunch of characters at Relics for next week. And a bunch of new crons to be testing out that we weren't able to collect all of them to start this week out. But we will be able to ch test out, I and mean, the Sidious one will keep pushing and seeing what we can do with it. Maybe a few others. But thank you for watching. Be nice to each other, everybody. This still plays Galaxy of Heroes.